Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new video. So today we're gonna be doing a Q&A and this is my very last Q&A of 2022. So I asked over on Instagram if you guys had any wrap up questions for 2022 or anything leading into the new year, 2023. So I've picked a few and we're gonna run through them and I'm gonna answer them for you guys. So the first question is, do you have any travel plans for 2023? So far, no, with the exception of, I saw an acquaintance go to a beautiful cabin in the mountains in Asheville, or it was technically outside of Asheville, but Larry and I have not been to Asheville. We wanna see the Biltmore Estate. They stayed at a really pretty cabin up in the mountains. And I was like, oh, that looks so fun. It was an Airbnb. So we are researching that maybe next fall. But besides that, we don't really have any plans to travel, but we'll see, we'll see. Oh, this is a hard one. Okay, so the top three moments of 2022. So I have Larry behind me, so I'll have him answer too. Hi, Liam. They're watching, they're, they're over there. But um, top three moments. Obviously, Liam being born, number one. I agree. When we went to Vero Beach. Oh, yeah. Was that this year? Oh, it was this year. Why am I? <laughs> Yay! Vero Yay. Beach, that was. That was all. You know what? That's my number two as well. That was an amazing, amazing vacation. Oh, I guess Angela having her baby as well. That was a top moment. That was exciting. So well, that's, that's my three. Do you have a topper? That when we had friends come and visit us here and then we went and visited Angela where she lives. Yeah. That would be my third kind of like a snowball kind of thing. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Next question is favorite kind of Christmas present that you wish for every year. Merry Christmas. Actually, not that I wish for it every year, but one of my favorite gifts are fuzzy socks. Like, like, these, these fuzzy socks, because I live in them. It's all I wear, even in the summer, because you know, in Florida you have air conditioning, it's chilly in the house. I just like being cozy. Okay, goals for 2023. I have a few goals in mind. Larry, do you have any goals for 2023? I wanna read more. Read more. That is leading up to one of our goals, by the way. Larry and I, so if you guys want to join, I've also got my mom to join in with us. If you guys want, right now decide if you want to read a little bit more pick how many books are your goal for 2023 so for 2022 oh my for 2022 i did not read one book not one not all the way through so my goal for this coming year is to read five books larry you said 10 10 10 books my mom's goal is 15 books so let me know what is your goal for the year and then pick a book. I am currently reading, just called Waypoints. This is the actor who played in Outlander. He played Jamie. So his name is Sam Hugan. Is it Hugan? Hugan? So I am currently on that. And although I did start it technically at the very end of 2022, I'm only a couple of pages in. So we're going to count that as my first read of the year. Um, so That was allowed in the rules that we set forward. Yeah, so if you guys start a book right after Christmas, maybe that you received for Christmas, um, let me know. And then give us some book recommendations that you think that we should read. So what are you starting off reading, hon? Okay, one of two books about the Sam Shepard murder trial. So along with that being a goal, I'm gonna share one of my goals with you guys that I'm gonna be very hesitant on sharing because it is going to be very difficult for me. I've already told Larry, I've told my best friend Angela, I've told my mom, Angela kind of giggled, uh, and that would be to not color my hair. <laughs> and I know, like I'm already pinning ombre hair, or not ombre, they don't call it that anymore, but balayage, like I'm already looking at it and I'm like, oh my gosh, just, and there's, it's just a personal goal. It's more so for hair health, I want to grow out my hair, but it's a struggle, guys, because I do like coloring my hair, and I do this vicious cycle where I go from dark brown back to blonde, back to brown, back to blonde, and I'm just like, right, let's just try not to color the hair. So that is another one of my goals. Another one of my goals is to, and I think this should be a goal all the time, but it's one that I think a lot of us lose sight of, and that's just taking care of yourself, taking a step back, 
whether that's focusing on just taking a walk, reading a book, taking a bath, taking a deep breath, <laughs> just simple generic things of taking a step back, slowing down if you can, not rush, 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 rush. I am constantly rushing to get things done. There's this whole thing where people call it romanticizing this or romanticizing that. And I literally get so, and how do you romanticize changing your load of laundry, right? How can that be exciting? It's really not, but at the same time, instead of rushing through it and bashing your hand into the dryer, think, right, I'm thankful that I have a dryer to dry my clothes and just kind of take a deep breath and don't look at it as such a negative. Like I find myself doing that all the time where I'm like, oh my God, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to do this. And what I'm trying to work on is shifting that thought process. Does that sound really weird from the outside to hear? I'm thankful that we have kitties that use the litter box. <sighs> yeah. So you get to scoop their poop and instead of dreading scooping the litter box, you can be like, right, I am so thankful that I am scooping the litter box instead of scooping it all off the floor. But does that sound weird or no? I can hear where you're coming from. It's like a mind reset, I would say, or trying to be more thankful for things instead of looking at tasks and things that we need to do in a negative light, even if we don't want to necessarily do them. Altering the thought process. That is what I am personally going to work on. And I think that's a personal journey for everybody anyways, all the time. And then I was also, this is getting deep. I'm, I'm like telling you guys the deep nitty gritty, but we're friends. So here we go. Okay. So I purchased a devotions book. So starting the morning off with a devotion. And the reason I did that is because I think a lot of people see that I'm super bubbly, super positive. That's, that's what you see, you know, but sometimes I have my days where I'm not, or I have days where I'm not as thankful and grateful as I should be. And I start off on a negative route. And I just think starting a day with a devotion will help shift my perspective. Hopefully this makes sense. Let me know, first of all, did that make sense? I hope it made sense. And just being the best mommy in the world that I can be to Liam. That's another one of my goals. Speaking of, look at my nugget. Hello, nugget. Hi. Well, let me turn the blur off. <laughs> blur. There we go. <gasps> Hello. Uh oh. Big old drool. <gasps> Hi. I think what she might be trying to say is a lot of us have mundane ruts that we focus on and we focus on it negatively. And she mentioned going to work. We, we have to go to work. I mean, it, and it, it is in a way a rut because you do it every day. And it's something you may or may not enjoy. But if you look at it as a task and you do that task, the laundry, scooping the litter box, whatever it is, whatever mundane thing it is, you can turn it into a positive and say, well, I had a whole list of stuff to do today and I just checked something off my list. Yes. It'll make you feel better and it'll give you strength to go do some more stuff. And at the end of the day, that list will be all checked off and then you can really feel good and you'll yeah. have more time tomorrow to do other stuff. What's the best thing about being a mommy? Wishing you all a Merry Christmas and Merry Christmas to you too. And what's the best thing about being a daddy? We'll do both. So for me, it's just, I don't know, waking up and seeing him smile every day and just seeing him grow every single day and learn new things, hit new milestones. It's just amazing, the love that you have for your baby is just intense. It's intense. Yeah, what about you? Yeah, when you sneak up on this little one when he's awake and he sees you and his face immediately goes to a huge smile, that's great. And yeah. when I get a phone call from Bruce, yep. that's great. Or if I can call him and he's got time and we can talk, that's, that's great. Yeah. Advice on starting the trying to conceive journey. Okay, so. I'm not an expert in that field, but we did go through, or I did go through the trying to conceive journey. So the one thing that I would prioritize and say is be super gentle with yourself. Be very kind to yourself. That journey is rough, long, rewarding, but challenging, very, very challenging. Like the, the internal stress and anxiety, which is never good for trying to conceive, but I think a lot of us deal with the stress and anxiety 
with however you're trying to conceive, whether that's at home or IVF or IUI, however you guys are doing it. It's a long haul. It's not a quick journey. Mm. So be prepared for that. Yeah. But like she said, the end result, perfectly yeah. splendid. Yep, 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 yep. See, you are the end result, and look at you. We get to look at your cute face all the time. I guess it would be kind of like, and I've never done this before, but taking a flight to Europe. It's a long, long flight, but boy, is it going to be worth it when you get there. It's very emotional, too, and talk to somebody. Have a friend, even if it's your partner or somebody else that you guys can go to and have conversations with because it's. Oh, I just remember those waiting periods where you've had the transfer or you've done the deed, however you want to word it, whatever you want to say, and then you have that waiting point of taking your pregnancy test. And when you see, oh, ex oh, excuse you. Yeah, excuse you. Um, oh, I don't know. It can be rough, guys, like to see the negative or to take the test and then you get the positive and the excitement and then it's just a whole thing. So just really be kind to yourself through that journey giving everybody out there that is going through it hugs, try to be patient, don't give up, never give up. Highest high and lowest low of 2022. Highest high, little man. I'm sure you guys already know that. What about you? Uh, I would agree with the highest high and I think the lowest low was that botched transfer that you had. I did not think of that. Yeah, that was the lowest low. First of all, that was a painful, painful attempt at a transfer, the longest torture chamber device situation that I've ever been in in my entire life. Yes. My other low, that because I didn't think of that until Larry said it, but my other low was getting sick last January. That was rough. So I was pregnant with Liam, and I got very, very sick. Everybody in my family got sick. Oh, no. Ooh, one milestone for Liam that you are looking forward to. <laughs> I think I have two. Walking and talking. What about you? Those are good milestones. Oh my gosh, yeah. How did you transition Liam out of a swaddle? We are struggling so bad. Ooh, I feel you with that. So what we did was there's the swaddle. And then there's what we call the squirrel suit. You can get it from Target. So instead of the swaddle... This is like a pouch that you zip them up in, but their arms are like this, like a squirrel, like a flying squirrel. That's what it looks like. And then they have the arm part that unzips. So you unzip the arms and then their arms are free, but the suit is still tight on their chest and then flares out so they can move their legs around. Liam loves that. And now we have taken him out of that most nights and now he just sleeps in his onesie. onesie. And that was the best way to tra transition him because we did one night where we didn't have a swaddle and then we just put him in his normal onesie and laid him down. Oh, no, 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 no. He was waking up a lot. It was not a good time. So that is my advice. I will link down the squirrel suit down below. I believe it's still the swaddle brand. It might not be actually. I'll link it down below. Oh, are you getting the urge to chop your hair? I know I am. Yes. I did have the urge to chop, chop my hair. However, no, I'm so glad I didn't chop my hair. And what my hairstylist recommended was to thin out the ends so they weren't so like thick and blunt. That way I wouldn't chop my hair because I feel like, oh, I don't know, maybe I would have regretted if I chopped it. But then when I do this, sometimes I'm like, oh, I kind of like that. But then I'm like, no, no, I like the, the long. So now I'm trying to grow it out again. Vicious cycle, vicious cycle. But if you want to chop it, Ooh, this is a deep question. Deep. Do you feel comfortable in your body and how do you get to feeling comfortable in it? Let me tell you, we are all <laughs> our own worst critics. I don't know of anybody, and you know what? I'm gonna speak about myself only because I don't wanna speak about other people because I don't know truly what other people think. But myself, I have never been 100% confident in my body ever. There's always something where I'm like, oh, oh, and I'm like, oh, why am I so critical of myself? I think we all do it. All of us see aspects of our bodies that we wish looked different or how you used to look. 
I do that all the time. I do that currently. I do that <laughs> when I think about my pre-pregnancy body or I'll go through pictures and see Angela and I when we were 19 and I'm like, dang, I wish I still looked like that. And I'm like, but I've been through so much. I've had a baby. I've aged 10 years since those pictures. I can't expect to still look like that. You always look younger in old pictures. <clears throat> You're funny. Mm. Um, so being comfortable in your own body, I think is something that you have to work at. It's kind of like changing the mindset. Like I was talking about one of my goals for the next year. I can sit here and say all the time, like your body is beautiful. Like this is the truth of it, but I know so many people say this. <laughs> we're able to walk we're able to drink and eat like our bodies are capable of doing amazing things and if we could just take a step back and realize that instead of wishing how we looked a different way like i wish i was you know thin with no cellulite like those are genetic things sometimes well i don't know i shouldn't say that because i don't know is there scientific behind it there could be more than just genetics with cellulite but i have cellulite I'm self-conscious of that, and it's something that I need to work on. I don't want you to feel alone, which is why I'm sharing that. The mind is a powerful thing. It's not always true. It tells us things that are not always true. What about you, honey, coming from a man's perspective? Do you feel comfortable in your body, and how do you get to feeling comfortable in it? So I'm not Brad Pitt. <laughs> this is Shania Twain song, isn't it? Yeah. Uh. No, do I wish I looked more physically fit or they, they describe it as what the, the the dad body dad bod yeah i've never been one to have people look and go ooh. so i mean as long as i don't repulse her and i try and not to get too light on the clothing outdoors so that the viewing public doesn't get offended oh my gosh i, I don't i'm 61 years old that, that uh, being worried about what, what I look like. Oh yeah. Oh. How's grandpa doing? So I know a lot of you have been asking about grandpa. A lot of you miss grandpa in the vlogs and the family day stuff. And, and I do understand. And grandpa is going through it a little bit, you know, and I don't really wanna put him on the camera and in the spotlight of the camera and Grandpa is, uh, he's going through, you know, the dementia and Alzheimer's. He has good days, he has not so good days. There are always reasons why I like don't film things or talk about certain things and uh, hi. And um, do know that grandpa is well, but grandpa has bad days too. Mm -hmm. So why are you exclusively pumping? So great question. He was losing weight, which was normal. And I think his pediatrician encouraged me to pump so that I could see how much I was getting to help me feel better about everything. And then we just started pumping and then I would give him a bottle. And um, the original plan was to pump so that Larry or my parents could get to feed him and then I would primarily breastfeed him. But then the pediatrician, encouraged me to pump so I could see how much he was getting and then when he was getting the bottle he got used to the bottle so then when I would put him on the boob to breastfeed he would get superbly sassy because he would have to work for it and he didn't want to work for it because he was used to getting it quickly out of the bottle um there has been a couple of times where I still try to breastfeed him I've tried every day for the last three days um and oh my gosh <laughs> again He'll latch on, great, but he will not suck because again, he's used to the bottle just dripping out and he's used to it that way. So that kind of like collapsed the breastfeeding journey, but that's okay. You know, what happened was meant to happen for us and that's just the route that it took us down. And because she pumps, I get to feed him maybe four times, five times a day sometimes. Larry almost feeds him every single feed because when he feeds, I pump. Um, so I would say you feed, you feed him more than I do. And that's one of the reasons why he probably gets that big smile when he sees me every time. Because daddy feeds you. Hi. <laughs> that's cute. Best piece of IVF advice. I'm starting next week and I'm a little scared. Oh, yay. Best of luck to you. I don't want to say don't be scared because it is a scary journey. But it is a great journey, an empowering journey. My advice 
just like the trying to conceive advice, be kind to yourself, be gentle with yourself, Bye. slow down too with anything else that you have going on in life because that journey is gonna consume you. It, at least it did for me. And um, hopefully your work is very sweet wherever you work, if you do work. Hopefully they're great about time off because it is a very time consuming journey as well. I will say it goes really quick. Looking back, I'm like, Ugh, how did that end? Like, how are we here? How do we have this cute little adorable four month old already? It just seems like yesterday, Larry was giving me progesterone and oil shots in the butt. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oof, which that was always fun. Um, but it seems like yesterday and now we're here. Whisker. I found a whisker. So yeah, just again, be kind to yourself. Take it day by day. Try not to rush the process. Ask questions. Oh my gosh. If you're confused by anything with your IVF clinic or, or the team or your nurse, like they are there to help you. Don't be afraid to ask any questions about anything. Even if it's a small, you think it's a small question, you know, and you already left the office, who cares? Give them a call. They're wonderful. Like I am still in contact with the nurse that did our journey and she is so lovely. Um, you have any advice, hon? I would normally get to know the staff and again, like she said, ask questions yeah. and, and be able to recognize them and them recognize me. Unfortunately, I didn't get to do any of that because I had to sit out in the car in the parking lot. COVID times. For hours on end because of COVID restrictions. So I really don't have an answer to that question I because if you'll be I didn't to get to experience it. Come with me next time. Yeah, but you can give advice from the home husband standpoint. Be prepared to learn. If yeah. your journey is like ours, the place that we went through had online quizzes that we had to watch presentations and then answer questions. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I don't know, what, what do we need this for? Well, you, I don't know if you need it or not, but boy, you sure learn a lot. Yeah, the modules. It reminded me of being in high school almost. Mm -hmm. And then the last question and the number one question is, which I answered in the last Q and A, I don't know if there's new, new members, um, or if you guys are still curious if we have changed our plans or not changed our plans, but baby number two is like the number one question. When is baby number two happening? When? <laughs> Phone calls will determine that answer. Yes. So 2023 guys, the I'm calling in March to schedule an appointment and we'll leave it at that March, April, anywhere in that time zone. I mean, March could roll around and Larry and I could look at each other and be like, eh, let's wait a month. Um, but that is the tentative plan. So when you guys ask about travel plans and everything else like that, I don't know how much we're going to really travel this year because we're going to be doing round two of IVF, if all goes well. I still have to go through all the testing again. I have to have the HSG procedure done again, which I am not a fan of. If you have to have it soon, I don't wanna freak you out. There is some women that have it and they don't feel a thing and it's glorious and they're out the door. Other women have it, me. She's had all and the it's tests and, and all the people that say, oh, I, I didn't like that test or it was bad. or um, Again, everybody's different, but she did all of it like mm -hmm. a champ. I don't think so. So if she did it, then you just, can do it. Yes. You got this. It's, you know, look at it as like a task list, one step closer to getting to your goal. One test off the list. Check, check. Just keep checking your way through every progesterone shot. Think check, check, check. Just keep checking them off. Cause that's one of the best ways to get through that and there's journey. And it's gonna seem like there's a short amount of time where you think, okay, we just checked that off the list. We're done with it. Well, they hit you with something else. Mm -hmm. And then you have to do that. Yeah. So it's not just one, two, three, okay, we're done. It's more months than- Months yeah. of testing and yeah. months of appointments. Um, so yeah, that is our plan. Our plan is next year. So again, will that fall trip happen? Who knows? And a lot of people want to know why we are wanting to have babies so close together. I don't know, and in my head it's just, it's nice because number one, I mean my body is never gonna get a chance to really go back to the normal if, if we're fortunate enough to get pregnant. I almost don't want, okay, so you recover from pregnancy, you recover from child labor, you're still breastfeeding or exclusively pumping, 
and then you go into the journey again. But there was no window there where I really got back to normal. And I kind of just don't want to go back to normal because <laughs> I think it would be harder for me to restart all over again. And we also just want to have them close to in age. And then when they grow up, we'll be able to travel again. Not that you can't travel with a little one, but it's just more difficult, more grab the diaper bag, grab this, grab that, grab this, grab that to travel with babies rather than when they're both, I don't know, five years old, four years old, and we can go and do things and they're a little bit more independent, but not really, but independent. That's why, you know, I don't know. Well, and it's nice that there's Walmart and a lot of other places that are just about every exchange on an interstate, because if you go somewhere and you run out of something or you forgot something, it's usually just a short drive to wherever you can go to get whatever you need. So that's a bonus that my parents didn't have the luxury of back in the day. With having babies so close together? Yeah, we're, yeah, we're traveling with, with We're kids. traveling, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're, they were lucky if they had a gas station and a, and a, a hotel motel at the interchange to yeah. stop for the night. So that's one thing, and, and I have a sister that's five-year gap between myself and my sister, and then I have a brother that's a five-year gap between my sister and my brother. And growing up, it was what I knew. It wasn't that big of a deal, but being on this end of the spectrum, looking at Liam, if he has a sibling that's closer to his age, I think it'll be better for, the, for both of them. Yeah, I agree. Hopefully you'll be best friends with your brother or sister or whoever will be coming along if, if so. So if any of you are doing the trying to conceive journey, I'll be with you again in about three months. That's crazy. Three months. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. If all goes well, if my testing is all cleared, if the doctor says, right, you can have your embryo transfer early. They want you normally to wait a year, but my nurse did say if, as long as I'm healthy and everything goes well with my testing, we could possibly have the transfer sooner than one year, um, one year post having Liam, so August. It's all subject to change. Yeah, everything can change. Delays can happen. That's the other thing with if you're doing the IVF journey, guys, don't be set on one route because so much can change. Oh, dear. Lexi, no biting. She's We're a playing. sassy old woman. We're just playing. Which is she's a sassy cat. Yeah. Sassy cat. We're just playing. Sassy cat. Oh, she's a really sweet cat. All right, guys. I think I'm going to end this here. Say thanks for watching. <gasps> thanks for watching. Yay, yay. There will be one more video. One. Thank you also for dealing with my missed videos. I missed two, I think, in Vlogmas. Maybe three. I don't know. But um, it wasn't Vlogmas. <laughs> This is why I wasn't Vlogmas. Um, but anyways, I will see you tomorrow Wait. or the next day. Hmm. I have an update to question a question that was asked by several off of our one video that was several days ago. Yes, yes. I referred to when I was talking to Liam about here comes your sister. Some people oh, were confused. Oh, who's your sister? Yeah, He's who's his your sister? sister. Uh, we refer to Lexi and Luna as Liam's sisters. Yes. So there's, there's not another little one here that we're keeping under the staircase or anything. It's, uh, it's oh my the kitties. God. It's the kitties. You ready for a nap? Mommy is. <laughs> Mommy never naps. I took out your ear. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Leave us a comment down below. And we will see you again very soon. Bye. Bye. -bye.